Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Do you know of a gentleman by the name of Richard Bach? He was an American author who wrote Jonathan Livingston Seagulls. He was more famous back in the 70s. And I remember seeing that book all over the place. Jonathan Livingston Seagull. He was an avid pilot, and um, he crashed his plane. He wrote Jonathan Livingston Seagull in three segments, and then he had a plane crash where he ended up upside down, and he had a near-death experience, and then he came back and he finished it with a fourth section of the book, and it was wildly popular back then. Then he also wrote a book called Illusions, Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah. But he said this that I find very interesting and fitting today, and I put this out there for my friend Carl. He says, the mark of your ignorance is the depth of your belief in injustice and tragedy. I'm going to repeat that part. The mark of your ignorance is the depth of your belief in injustice and tragedy. He's putting something out there to the pessimist. He's saying, you know what? You can buy into that nonsense, but that's what it is. It's nonsense. But he goes on to say this, which I think is most profound. He says what the caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls the butterfly. What I'm saying to you folks listening to the Kevin Jackson show is don't worry about the injustice and the tragedy of what you're seeing right now, because what's going to happen is that caterpillar is going to go away and become this beautiful butterfly. And you're going to watch the the Democrats, these leftists, do a perp walk of monumental proportions. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com is where you can find out more about us. And if you want to chime in, 844-551-8255. See, folks, a strategy is afoot here by the left. They are in defensive mode. Think about what's going on right now. McCabe gets fired. Rightfully so. We know McCabe deserved to be fired. McCabe was a crooked FBI agent, a crooked G-man, who was willing to do whatever it took to get Donald Trump out, to get Democrats elected. He's part of an apparatus that has been operating now for decades, and it went on steroids under Obama. A group, a White House, willing to do anything to keep Donald Trump out. Willing to do anything to get more Democrats elected. Not because their ideology works. Let me tell you something. I don't care how many Republicans get elected. What I care is how many people that really love this country get elected and who are willing to listen to reason when it comes to solving the country's problems. That's who I want elected. That's who you want elected. But we have a strategy at play right now, right before your very eyes, where the Democrats want to make the bad guy into the good guy. Andrew McCabe is a bad guy. That's why he got fired. It's as simple as that. But let me tell you, there's a strategy afoot. Do you see the boogeyman? The left wants you to believe that President Donald Trump fired McCabe. That's what they want you to believe. Let me tell you something. President Trump didn't come on, hold a press conference, and fire McCabe. President Trump didn't say to Jeff Sessions, fire McCabe. President Trump didn't do anything to interfere with what's going on in this investigation. The only thing he's done is say, I'm not going to let you demonize me. I'm not going to sit back and be quiet. If you think I'm not going to tweet about what you're trying to do to me and expose all these clowns and drain this swamp, you are wrong. But the left need their villain. But I ask you, who's the real villain? See, what you're watching is transference. The left wants you to believe that the bad guy is the good guy and the good guy is the bad guy. It's exactly how they made slavery. Something that the Republicans can no longer feel proud about. That they got rid of it. They make the Democrats, they make people believe that the Democrats care about black people. And they were the very people that enslaved us and hung us. So they want you to believe, America, and the rest of the world. Andrew McCabe. He's a good guy. So what? He was complicit in trying to help Hillary Clinton. I mean, in in taking money and help his wife get elected. And it's part of the bigger scheme of, of the leftists. So what? He didn't let people know all the truth 
about all the shenanigans that he was doing in the FBI to thwart Trump's presidency. He's the good guy. See, in their minds, he is the good guy. Keeping Trump out means he was doing good. Donald Trump didn't fire McCabe. The uh, the FBI Office of Professional Responsibility did. His own peers fired him. You believe this? And now they say people are lining up to hire McCabe. I'll talk about that in a bit. What the Democrats are saying without saying is you're above the law when you toe the line. No need to fear repercussions as long as you do what we tell you to do. You name me one Republican that you know that could have done what Hillary Clinton did and still be out running around India tripping down stairs or McCabe who's still fighting for a pension. (laughs) Are you kidding me? Republicans would be in jail and there would be media outcry because you know what? Both sides of us would be on it. We would be crying for it as well. Ask yourself why these leftists won't do that. I want to play this clip. You have that clip ready? They even say firing McCabe is impeachable. Check this out. Think about the Christmas time that the McCabe family had around their tree in their house, because on December 23rd, the president of the United States took to Twitter to say this about Andy McCabe. How can FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, the man in charge, along with Leakin James Comey of the phony Hillary Clinton investigation, including her 33,000 illegally deleted emails, be given $700,000 for his wife's campaign by Clinton puppets? during the investigation. Just for clarity, it was a Terry McAuliffe-related political action committee. Let's go to the next frame, which says FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe uh, is racing the clock to retire with full benefits, 90 days to go, question mark, three exclamation points. Jeremy Bash, out in America, if a defendant gets a really bad dose of publicity, a talented lawyer will move for a change of venue. Get it out of there. Try it in a nearby community. You can't go anywhere in this country with a president who is openly attacking a civil servant on Twitter. And that's right, Brian. And for you to believe that Andy McCabe's firing was on the level, you have to believe that it is entirely coincidental that he was fired by Attorney General Jeff Sessions 24 hours before he was eligible to retire after a, after a 20-year career of distinction, of honor with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and that is entirely coincidental that the two things are happening at the same time. And of course, nobody, nobody in America believes that. It is clear as day that the President of the United States directed the Attorney General, either implicitly or explicitly, to fire Andy McCabe to undermine him as a witness in any upcoming proceeding in which McCabe could corroborate Jim Comey's testimony that the president of the United States obstructed justice. I want to stop this there for just a moment because uh, there's a lot to discuss there. First of all, I love how he says either implicitly or explicitly. So when you, when you use that terminology, either implicitly or explicitly, the president, you know, obstructed justice. Well, no, you have to pick one. There isn't any implicit either. He actually did it or he didn't. But look, the two choices are, hey, look, whether he did it intentionally or unintentionally, it's obstruction of justice. No, it isn't. Because if that's the case, why isn't Hillary Clinton in prison? It's funny how these people never hold themselves to the same standard. But what I didn't play the first part of that. And, and maybe we'll play it coming into the, in the next, sec, the next uh, segment. But here's what was funny. He's ta- he, he uses Stormy Daniels as a backdrop, and I'm just going to leave that as the teaser for the next section, the next segment, before he even introduces this. But then he introduces this as if there's some big deal with, with what President Trump did by doing what? He pointed out the truth about McCabe's wife's campaign. That's all Donald Trump did. He said, how is it that this guy who is obviously a Hillary Clinton supporter whose 
wife has accepted $700,000 from the Clinton Foundation. How is it that he gets to be the one in charge of this thing? That's a legitimate question. Whether he asks it in an op-ed or at a press conference or whatever, I'm curious. I don't know about you. I'd be curious to know how that came to be. Then what he says is, hey, by the way, this scoundrel is trying to retire and get his full pension and he's running against the clock. Don't you find that interesting? That's all that that, uh, Donald Trump did in his tweet. He's bringing things to the attention that the press isn't bringing up. And they're going, oh, he's openly attacking a civil servant. Is it? They make it sound like he's such an amazing person. How could he possibly attack this civil ser- servant? And of course, that's the reason why they need a change of venue. And how do you get a change of venue when you have a president who won't quit tweeting? Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com.